The city of Burundara is connecting people with nature through a new community project. <laughs> Residents taking part in the Backyard Biodiversity Project are discovering more about our local environment and starting to create wildlife friendly gardens at home using locally native plants. The city of Burundara is located east of Melbourne city centre. It includes the leafy suburbs of Kew, Hawthorne and Camberwell and some wonderful parks and gardens. But like so many urban areas, most of the original natural habitat has been lost or greatly modified. As a result, many of our native animals and local flora are under threat, and pest birds and invasive weeds have become a real problem for residents and council. Council is protecting our precious remnant vegetation, including eucalypts which are hundreds of years old. Together with local community groups, they work to enhance the 15 biodiversity corridors that crisscross the municipality. The corridors allow passage through the suburbs for wildlife and the local plant seeds that animals often carry in their fur and feathers. Without them, our local plant and animal life would be even more isolated and at serious risk of local extinction. The Backyard Biodiversity Project complements Council's revegetation work and provides a practical way for residents to take an active role in enhancing the natural environment. Over five to six weeks, residents come together for a series of workshops and activities. Workshops provide practical information about local biodiversity and provide advice on planning a successful habitat garden. An individual session with a landscape designer provides additional support and is followed up with a trip to an indigenous nursery to select some free tube stock plants. Project highlights also include a guided walk through a local biodiversity corridor the Backyard Biodiversity Group from Linden Park in Camberwell visited Back Creek Biodiversity Corridor with the local friends group. They encountered lorikeets and other birds living in the bush, familiarised themselves with local plants and also learnt about ongoing improvements to the corridor and the creek. There's that water that's cool up there and it flows gently over there and it just seeps right down the The walk was followed by a community planting activity that provided some hands-on fun, planting experience and a living legacy of the group's involvement in the project. Planting some of these little native daisies, the chrysocephalum, so it's a gorgeous little plant that gets these little billy button yellow heads on them and you see them flowering around now and it will spread to quite a way, um, you know, about one, one to two metres. And we've just seen them on Diana's front um, nature strip and they're just taking off so well. So it's a really lovely little plant and I plant it in all sorts of gardens, no matter where, whether it's exotic or native or whatever. And I love them. Well, for the last 10 years we've been trying to plant out along the existing green corridors, but that's only a very, very slender uh, section of, of, of open land. And quite often you'll find that uh, exotic and weed species actually encroach on this land from residents. So it's important that we A, educate residents in terms of removing exotic weeds and B, extend the boundary of the green corridors by utilising the gardens. And of course the third benefit of that is of course is it makes gardens more, more enjoyable because you're getting native bird species uh, visiting. So it just means that uh, living in our, our community here becomes more enjoyable for the residents. Back Creek, which is um, a thoroughfare which was very rough and um, not very pretty and not a, not a very um, nice place to be. Um, and now it's got native flora and fauna in there for people to go and visit. And I just understand now that 30,000 people a year go through it and get a, get a benefit out of that. So what the people have done there is um, fantastic and uh, they should be given a lot of credit for that. Uh, I've learnt about the different ranges of plants in the community and in all the parks and how many animals live around there. Oh, it's fantastic to try and bring back the native animals, the birds and the animals into to the area and uh, yeah, create a, the environment like it, it would have been before, before um, these areas were settled. Yeah. Well, I'm very very enthusiastic now, <laughs> getting more enthusiastic every week, I think. Almost like a kid with a project, you know. 
and um, and just the whole thing about encouraging the birds and the, and the animals, I think it's fantastic. So you get that feeling where we were in the garden, it was just so peaceful. And I think um, to get create that sort of feel good. And it helps the council and we've met lots of people too. I've been here 12 years and I haven't met most of these people, so it's good. Residents also visited one of Melbourne's loveliest private native gardens. The visit provided real inspiration and enabled the group to visualise how their tiny plants would grow over the months and years to come. The garden was in full bloom, buzzing with tiny native insects providing a feast for small native birds. On the other side we had mainly old uh, One of the great things about the project is the connections people make. There were opportunities for residents to share their knowledge and learn from each other. Although some of our Linden Park project group lived in the same street, they'd never met before. By the end of the project, some wonderful friendships were starting to develop. And some of the group will stay involved with local friends groups that are helping to bring new life to our suburban creeks and reserves. For more information on the project and to view the guide for creating a wildlife friendly garden, please visit the City of Burundara's website www.burundara.vic.gov.au